From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by... From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. It was one of the most disturbing stories we've seen in a long time. Video of a busload of school kids bullying a mentally disabled teen. What's happened to the Hazleton bus bullies and their driver? Our top story on News 13 for this Wednesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. The video of the students bullying a boy with autism is infuriating, but now the community is reaching out to the team. Just a week after the incident, Christina Papa spoke with school officials and an attorney to find out how the students and bus driver involved will be held accountable. This video has caused quite an uproar in the Hazleton area, and for good reason. 18-year-old Christopher Seaman took this video last week as a bus passed him on the street. He captured a vicious verbal and physical attack on tape that has not gone unnoticed by the community. First reaction was Mama Bear's claws came out. You know, I'll protect both of my children at any cost. Christopher has been diagnosed with autism, and when his mom, Sherry Seaman, posted the video to Facebook, it received thousands of responses from concerned parents and people from all over the country. But the support didn't just come from Facebook. In fact, folks right here on P Street today are upset about what happened last week. They want to make sure those kids are reprimanded so something like that never happens on their street again. And I think it's a shame. There's no compassion out there anymore. All there is is damage. Sherry is looking to find justice for her son, and so is the school district. We have identified all of the individuals responsible uh, for the conduct on the bus, and we are filing criminal charges. The family's attorney released a statement today saying those actions and inactions led to this horrible incident will be held accountable. Bringing attention to this horrible incident will lead to much needed changes in current policies to ensure that this never happens again. Hazleton School District Superintendent Dr. Antonelli says the tape from the bus was appalling calling it the worst behavior he's seen on a bus in his years as an administrator. That bus driver will be held accountable for the kids' bad behavior. And in fact, as superintendent, I will be making a recommendation uh, to the board uh, for uh, uh, sanctions against the operator. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. So how does Luzerne County deal with the soaring cost of maintaining its prison? County Council met yesterday evening to hash out a plan to keep the facility on budget. That budget work session was moderated by the council, while Correctional Service Division head Alan Nesbitt fielded questions and proposed tweaks to the current spending. Among those tweaks, Nesbitt talked about changing the inefficiencies of both union contracts as well as transportation for inmates to work release and community service programs. I am going to approach the court uh, for maybe sentenced uh, individuals uh, that would allow uh, a, a charitable organization to come, pick the individuals up, take them, and then bring them back. Uh, use that experience before in a correctional setting, and it works fine. Nesbitt proposed other ideas like inmates doing both volunteer beautification work or even work for carnivals and other public events and venues. While no decisions were made at the work session, the council says progress is being made on wrangling the prison budget. And still ahead on News 13, a forecast that actually has no rain in it for a couple of days. We'll have it for you in News 13 weather. And then making sure all of our children have every opportunity for learning. We'll take, tell you what the community is doing to make that happen coming up on News 13. Well, school is out, but organizations in the area are already thinking about ways to collect school supplies for the fall. Christina Papa explains how the community can help out. They're taking a stand for kids. And today is uh, Stand for Children's Day, sponsored by the Child Advocacy Committee um, of the United Way of Greater Hazleton.
Mary Angela Shell isn't standing alone. Plenty of United Way organizations came together today to help kids get the support they need to grow up strong. Well, I think what's great about it is it, it is truly an illustration of the community working together because the program is a uh, combination of uh, United Way agencies, uh, private agencies. The Child Advocacy Committee had a resource table full of information for parents and kids today at the YMCA, but there was also a big yellow surprise that kids were excited to see. For the uh, Stand for Children's Day, we're kicking off the Start Smart project, which is a um, program that collects school supplies for uh, children in the uh, greater Hazleton area. So what kind of supplies are kids looking for? Um, notebooks and pencils and colored pencils, crayons, and uh, I like some like art supplies with me. I would get markers, um, colored pencils, um, pencils, and crayons. Mary Angela wants folks to donate the items mom and dads may not have the extra money to buy so kids can get the supplies they need. This year we're, we're targeting art supplies, you know, even more, you know, more importantly because sometimes, you know, those are the, the, la the, the least that you think of because you think of pencils and so on. The organizations plan to fill the big yellow bus by the end of the summer. This bus may be empty today, but with an extra push from organizations, these kids should have the school supplies they need by the time the bus really gets going the first day of school in September. Cans will be up around the town where donations can be dropped off. This will be going on from July 8th to um, August 16th, and there'll be bins across the community um, where you can do donate the supplies. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. And since school is out and kids will be playing outside in the sun, maybe getting a bumper bruise along the way, parents are warned to take some extra precaution with their kids as they let them run and play this summer. Pediatrician Dr. James Caggiano spoke with News 13 today and gave out a couple of good tips for parents. He warns parents not to use sunscreen with bug repellent to always make sure kids are being watched by the pool. Kids are prone to getting bumps and rashes, but if anything looks suspicious, he says, bring them right to the office. If, uh an illness of any kind interferes with the kid's activity, makes them um, sort of more listless, less actively engaged in the way that they normally would be, then I'm concerned about it. And, and, and um, we try to uh, get parents to develop a sense of, like I said, what sick looks like. And, and if there's any doubt, the default setting is, look, if you're not sure, we're happy to look at it. It's no problem. And it will soon be fireworks season, and the doctor says parents should always be there when sparklers are being used. And time now for a look at the News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. Our creative condition tonight is all about sunshine. It's by Natalie Kelly, a student at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School, and she says it's a beautiful day, and there's her house under a perfect sun, and her house even has a peace sign on the roof. That's pretty cool. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. For tonight, it'll be clear with a low down to 54 degrees. And then Thursday, the sunshine starts. It'll be sunny with a high near 72, mostly clear at night with a low down to 59. Degrees. And for Schuylkill County for tonight, mostly clear with the low all the way down to 49, but then on Thursday, sunny with a high of 78, mostly clear at night with a low down to 57 degrees. Well, the staff is getting ready for a big summer of making beautiful music at the CEO Music Camp at Furwood this summer. Counselors, music, and head directors met today to clean up and prepare for music camp sessions starting on July 7th. CEO will be offering instruction for overnight campers, day campers, and beginners. With arts and music programs constantly being cut by schools, summer camps like this one at Furwood are crucial for kids' appreciation, and this one offers some great instruction. To have a, a way to encourage kids to play their instruments uh, and have a positive experience with music in the summer is fantastic, especially um, if your school program is, is getting cut. It's a great way to show uh, a community support for a music program. And there are still spaces open for aspiring musicians from third grade on up. For more information about specific camp dates, accommodations, and fees, or just getting involved with the CEO Music Camp, visit ceomusiccamp.org. O -R -G. And now let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play. The Daily, 157. Big 4, 8019. Quinto, 76202. And The Treasure Hunt, 1, 2, 10, 23, 28. Hope you won.
Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town. Hazleton Power presents an outdoor summer social, which will be at Cousins Joe's Place in Cunningham, June 27th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. This event is free to attend with a complimentary barbecue, cash bar, and a chance to win door prizes. Anyone interested in joining Power is welcome to attend. And finally, the Shenandoah Open Air Farm Market. The season will start on June 25th on the first block of South Main Street and the first block of East Center Street. This is open Tuesdays and Fridays from 8 a.m. to noon, and it should run until the month of November. Additional farmers and growers are welcome, so inquire today. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 extends our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of these recently departed. Cecilia Fugger in a Faisal Township. Memorial Mass will be held Friday at 9 a.m. from the St. Cyril Methodius Parish at the Church of St. Joseph. Visitation will be Friday from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Dolores M. Mascheco, formerly of Fever Meadows. Arrangements are under the direction of the Treasure Coast Seawinds Funeral Home, Florida. John Jack Hutchie, formerly of Hazleton. Memorial Mass will be held Thursday at 11 a.m. from the St. Patrick Catholic Church in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Marie Ann Skirla of Hazleton. Mass will be held Sunday at 10.30 a.m. from the St. John of the Cross Church in Roslyn. Viewing will be Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. at the Wetzel & Son Funeral Home. William Mooney. Funeral arrangements are under the direction of the Lehman Family Funeral Service. And Mary Ashcraft of Freeling Township, New Jersey. Arrangements were under the direction of the New Baker Funeral Home. Tenant obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. Call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Once again, the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 501-3410 for information on lunch and packages. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Baseball, baseball, and more baseball coming at you. Why not? It feels like baseball weather out there. We finally got some summer-like conditions, so let's get right to it. Start locally with the Hazleton Area Legion. The Stripes and Strikes, they uh, ran into a bad combination against Nanny Coke, and that is uh, Nanny Coke pounded out 11 hits in over seven innings. Nanny Coke gets by Stripes and Strikes 5-1. The final, this one up at the Pagnotti Field in uh, Hazleton. Meanwhile, rain washed out a lot of baseball yesterday, including the Norfolk Tide. Seems the closer you were to the coast, the better chance you had to get rained out. So Russ Kanzler and company, they'll have to uh, make it up with a double dip today. Scranton Wilkes-Barre gets upended by Rochester, the Red, Red Wings, 4-3 winners. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs shut out the Detroit Farmhands in Toledo. Final there, three to nothing. Now, there's our schedules. There's the double dip with Norfolk. The Tide will play too because of the rain out. Scranton wilkes Bear and the Iron Pigs have singlets today in Rochester and Toledo. Up at Fenway Park yesterday, well, uh, the Rays have hit a rut in the road for sure. It has been a really bad 10 game stretch for them. And that happened again yesterday as the Red Sox beat them in the first game five to one and then had a two-run home run off the bat of Johnny Gomes in the bottom of the ninth inning, and that sent the Rays to a double-dip loss. Not the way you wanted to start this road trip. Hey, life in the American League East, right? Well, Joe Madden knows that, and he was quick to point out that, uh, hey, this is what happens when you play in the best division in baseball. The life in the American League East, man, that's how it works. You don't, uh, you don't worry about it. You don't cry about it. Um, just like we lost some tough ones, we could start winning those same tough games, and our guys know that. Uh, it was. That extra inning game was a tough one. It was a very difficult one, especially coming off winning two out of three against a real good Baltimore team. And then we just caught Kansas City at the bad time. But that's how the baseball season crumbles sometimes. Madden and the Rays will try to get on the winning ways. They've got the Red Sox again tonight up at Fenway. Meanwhile, Yankees-Dodgers play a double dip. This is the problem with interleague. And this, uh, you know, two-game series, they got washed out last night. So what this uh, series amounts to is one day in the Bronx. That's the way it goes. How about the Phils? They've taken care of business against the Nationals back-to-back -back nights. Can they do it again? We'll wait and see. And don't look now. Here come the Mets. They got a stellar pitching performance yesterday, both ends of the doubleheader. And they sweep the Atlanta Braves. But uh, it's all about the future for the Mets, not this year. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati as well. 
Now, uh, while the weather's so nice outside, uh, the heat is cranking it up on the inside. Now, we're not talking about the temperature. We're talking about the defending world champ, Miami Heat. They looked like they were dead in the water late in the third quarter. They were trailing by as many as 13 points, and LeBron was looking, well, very pedestrian. However, that all changed. LeBron and his teammates, they took over in that fourth quarter, and they erased the deficit, and they actually came back strong in the final minute to tie this game and send it to overtime, and then it would be the Heat who would survive the extra period, and that will force a game seven. And I'm telling you, LeBron stepped it up in that fourth quarter and in the overtime, but listen, the whole team played well. This is a good team. It's probably the best player of this generation, but uh, they also have some good supporting cast. That was obvious. Now it's on to game seven, and that'll be tomorrow night. Speaking of series, Stanley Cup Finals, game four in Boston tonight. Blackhawks and the uh, Bruins, they'll be skating. The puck will drop at 8 o'clock, so uh, you got Fenway baseball and you got Stanley Cup playoffs going on in Boston. That's a tough call, actually. Well, June is National Internet Safety Month, and as all young people spend more time online this summer, state officials want parents to monitor what they do and talk to their kids about online safety. Matthew Petrillo has some tips to make sure the kids are safe when they do go online. We're going to see what we can do and get it back on the Internet. Tom Bowitz has been running his computer shop in Pottsville for almost a decade. He says not being safe online can be costly to computer users. It, they get viruses. Some of them are really mean. There's no antivirus that's bulletproof. So, yeah, we get, we get viruses. Viruses that can destroy your computer and scam you for money. There's the FBI virus now, and there's a couple of them. It looks like a government official paper, but it's not. Don't send no money in. Pull the plug and come down here. We'll get it out. So Attorney General Kathleen Kane today reminded Pennsylvanians of the importance of online safety, especially during the summer months. And that's why we need to make sure that the Internet is a safe and secure environment for everyone. That it's a community built on trust, accountability, and respect. Without these things, we lose the promise of the Internet. So she's taking a hard approach to fighting Internet crime. That's why I'm thrilled to join with Facebook in this consumer education campaign around safety and privacy. Through this campaign, Facebook and I have created an Ask the Safety Team video series. And she lists some helpful tips. She says change your passwords every three months and make sure all your passwords are unique and complex. Don't use your date of birth or maiden name or social security number. She says think twice before sharing information like your name, address, or date of birth online. Your new online friend may be a scammer trying to take your money. Make yourself comfortable with the security settings of each of your online accounts. And when using a wireless router, make sure your network is secured. Having a secured wireless network makes it difficult for someone to access your home computer. Now one way to avoid people from knowing too much about you is to delete your Facebook altogether. But as long as you're using the internet for either online banking, emailing, or other activity, your privacy can still be compromised. And if you follow those rules, hopefully you won't have to take your computer to Tom. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Pottsville. Afternoon of fun and learning about prehistoric monsters. Kids from kindergarten through eighth grade gather today at the Wilsey Performing Arts Center in Hazleton to learn about dinosaurs, fossils, and mineral specimens. Funded by Senator Dechock's Lighthouse Foundation, it's the first of eight programs that kids will enjoy this summer through the Hazleton Area Public Library Summer Reading Club. Michelle Kushmeter thought this would be a great kickoff for the Hazleton Area Public Library's eight-week summer reading program. This is great. It's, it's a hands-on program. It's interesting. It's entertaining. It's educational. It's so many things for them. It's a great way to start the summer. Well, if you're thinking of joining the fun, there's still plenty of time to get involved in the library reading clubs, both at the Hazelton Area Library and all the other branch libraries. And plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. Chrysler recalling Jeep Cherokees from as far back as 1993. We'll tell you why and what to do if you drive one. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back.